Hi, everybody. <clears throat> so just for a few minutes here, uh, starting off this video by deconstructing the empennage crate and uh, scrapping a bunch of this wood and using it for the cradle for the horizontal stabilizer. I was only really using it as a painting box anyway. It was taking up a lot of floor space, and I hate that. One comment I will make is, you know, I like metal shavings. I like wood shavings. I don't like them combined together. Eventually what happened was I wound up giving in the way the, uh, the wood that I cut up to a friend of mine. Uh, they were going camping and we're going to use the wood for kindling. So here we go. This is the riveting and construction of the front sta uh, front stabilizer. The front spar of the horizontal stabilizer. Doublers in place, stringers are in place. Now it's time to pull out the trusty trusty squeezer and go to town. There I am applying some blue tape, blue painter's tape, to some rows of rivets that correspond to where the ribs will attach to the front spar, so you do not want to be riveting those. And while the blue tape works, <laughs> at the same time, you get complacent and don't think, oh, there's blue tape there. While I was putting together the vertical stabilizer, I put some blue tape on. There are some holes that you don't want to dimple or rivet. And I left the tape on, and as I was getting ready to do the final construction, I noticed that the blue tape was on the inside of the skin. So I had to take the entire skin off, and well, not the entire skin, but I had to uh, unclico a lot of it just to get the tape off from the inside. squeezer really makes quick work of those rivets. If you're going to get the squeezer, and I can't recommend it enough, make sure, and I got mine from Cleveland Aircraft Tool, uh, is get the adjustable ram. I can't even imagine having to change rams out there's because there's different yoke lengths, thicknesses, and you need to have a different ram based upon which yoke you would have. And the rams are set distance, so if you have a 4 4 rivet, 4 length versus a 5 length, um, you need to have less of a gap between the two dies. To do that with a fixed ram, you have to add shims, or you have to have different lengths of a uh, flat die. And while it works perfectly fine, and I'm sure once you're used to it, then it's pretty quick, but just having the adjustable ram, it's, uh, it's it takes no time at all. <clears throat> so one of the things I'm doing here, you can see I've got my little ball-peen hammer out and uh, drill, so... And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the, the primer that I use is great, uh, but one of the things is that it, it does go on a little thick and will leave a small uh, residue of paint inside of the rivet holes. And the first thing you start thinking of is, oh god, did I not, you know, line something up correctly? Is this thing on backwards? No, it's just paint. And sometimes all it takes is just a tiny tap from the ball peen hammer, it sticks right on through. So, or, but if there's any resistance at all, then I'll just take a drill and just drill the paint out. I just I don't want to enlarge the hole on accident, not even once, so I would rather use a tiny little bit of brute force just to push a rivet in. So we're just going to continue uh, putting rivets in here, I'm pretty sure, for the next uh, couple of videos. Is it's uh, the doubler and the uh, spoilers, so spoilers? I meant uh, stringers. 
So I'm just going to let this uh, trail on out, and I'll see you in the next video.